Hello everybody and welcome to Bull Technology. My favorite video game genre is City Builders. Growing up, I played several SimCity releases and today I spend dozens of hours playing games such as City Skylines and High Rise City. But SimCity was the game that started it all. It was the first City Builder. From SimCity 2000 to SimCity 4, this game has some incredible releases. But its last game, released in 2013, caused so much controversy that it nearly ended the SimCity franchise. So was SimCity 2013 that bad? Is it still a good game today? And should you pick it up? To answer these questions, I say we give this game a review. In the interest of full disclosure, EA is not sponsoring this video, and all of the opinions you are about to hear are entirely my own. SimCity 2013 was released in March of 2013, and it was the long-awaited successor to SimCity 4, which came out a decade prior to 2013. SC-2013 is a city-building and urban planning simulation, massively multiplayer online game, developed by Maxis and published by Electronic Arts. It currently retails for $19.99 on the Origin Launcher. SimCity begins with the SimCity Launcher, and this is where you select the server that you would like to play on. This will allow for the multiplayer functionality of the game. And back in 2013, there was no single-player mode in the game. I should note that they eventually added single-player functionality to SC2013. But users back in 2013 were required to have an internet connection all the time to play this game. And this was one of the many, many reasons that SC2013 suffered so much bad press. After selecting your server and then selecting which game mode you'd like to play in, you may now pick a starting region. There are an array of maps to choose from, all of which have any number of city plots available to build on. Some maps feature only a handful of cities, while other maps feature several dozen cities. Within each map, there are separate regions, which usually comprise of several cities surrounding a Great Works project. More on that later. After selecting and naming your map, you may then select a starting city location and begin your game. From here, SimCity feels like most other city builders. You are given a small amount of money and expected to grow your undeveloped plot of land into a thriving metropolis. You'll start by laying down roads and zonable building areas. After zoning, you'll need to supply your citizens with electricity, water, and garbage services. Reach a certain population, and you'll be given the option to place your city hall. City hall will give you access to more city services. The beat goes on. Roads play an integral role in your city's growth. You'll first want to start with lower density roads, but eventually you'll have the capability to upgrade your roads to higher density. Higher density roads affect the density of the buildings adjacent to those roads. Would you rather have apartment complexes than trailer parks? Just upgrade your roads. Roads also function as the main connector for electricity, water, and sewage. No need for pipelines or power lines in this game. And this leads me to a huge complaint I have with the game, roads and traffic management. Uh, eventually your city will grow to a point where traffic becomes unmanageable, and you're given very few tools to solve these traffic issues. There is no way to toggle traffic lights or prevent certain vehicles from driving on specific roads. Your only ability to tame traffic is through public transportation and road density. But these tools do not suffice. Not to mention the bridge and tunnel tools are just finicky at best. What's not finicky though is the ability to upgrade city service buildings. And this is where SimCity gets a huge win. All ploppable buildings in SC2013 allow for modifications to make them more efficient. Is your wind power plant not generating enough electricity? Simply add another wind turbine. Is your fire station not responding to fires quick enough? Simply add another bell tower. Is your park not creating enough high wealth sims? Simply add an additional fountain. 
This customization is something that really makes SimCity stand out, and I love that. While we're talking about standing out, I should mention city specialization. In SimCity, you're encouraged to give each of your cities a given specialization. You can drill for oil, mine for natural resources, become a gambling metropolis, or create a large tourist trap with your city. Mining and drilling is done through placing ploppable buildings on areas with only a finite amount of resource, and you can sell these resources for a hefty profit. Gambling and tourism is handled through creating casino networks and intricate tourist destinations. The city specialization in SimCity is something I really enjoy. These features in games like City Skylines cost extra through expansion packs. SimCity specialization allows for each city to have a purpose and work together. I love that. Speaking of working together, I should mention Great Works projects. Great Works are massive projects that all cities in a region can contribute to and that all cities will benefit from. You can build a rocket launching site, a massive power station, the list goes on. All cities in a region can contribute resources to build the Great Works project. Uh, these are usually very rewarding, and they typically come later in the game. Uh, while we're talking about the late game, I think it's important to discuss the biggest issue with SimCity. The city sizes. The cities in SimCity are just way too small. Uh, for some perspective, it only took me two hours of gameplay to fill this entire tile to the brim. It's frustrating, limiting, and annoying in a way that kills the creative aspect of this game. In most maps, the city goes straight to the edge, and so you're left with this odd square tile of urban next to fields of empty space. And because city sizes are so small, you are only typically given one entrance point to your city via the main highway, which is yet another limitation. Many people have said that SimCity 2013 is more like Sim Town, and I would have to agree. And while the space is limiting, there is one benefit. Multiplayer. If you want to play SimCity with a friend, you're in luck. Just have your friend join your world, and he or she can claim other city tiles, and you can work together to create great works and share resources. And as someone who's played dozens of multiplayer SimCity games, this can be fun and rewarding. Uh, something else I should mention about SimCity is the graphics and music. The graphics in SimCity are drop-dead beautiful. This game is almost 10 years old, but it looks far nicer than the much newer game City Skylines. The models are to scale and very realistic, uh, the shadows and lighting are perfect, and the atmosphere is incredibly immersive. Uh, speaking of immersive, the music and sounds in SimCity are just excellent. The SimCity soundtrack is possibly my favorite video game soundtrack. Uh, it's orchestral and just very fitting for a city builder. There are many things that I haven't discussed about SimCity, both good and bad. But let me just say this. SimCity 2013 is a good game. It has many excellent features and mechanics. But is it a perfect city builder? No. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love SimCity 2013 and I've sunk tons of time into this game. But if I want to sit down for hours and build a thriving metropolis, this game just doesn't cut it. What's sad is this game is far better than the critics say. These days, the SimCity name has been reduced to nauseating mobile games, and as a longtime SimCity fan, that brings a tear to my eye. So do I recommend SimCity 2013? Surprisingly, at $19.99, yes. It's not perfect, but it's definitely a fun and enjoyable game flaws and all. So be sure to leave a like, a comment, and definitely subscribe. And thank you all for watching.